Those of us who grew up with 2000s era metal tones have just been given an absolute gift. Josh Middleton's STL Tonality Amp Pack combines three Golden Era amp heads with three Golden Era cabinets to match, one of which is only a single serial number removed from the Golden Cab used by Andy Sneap himself to get only about 90% of your childhood favorite metal tones. Today, I'll be showing you how to use these to get the textured, thick metal tones we were renowned for back in the 2000s. And what better way to do that than with a brand new Solosa single, Poison for the Lost. These techniques all build upon one another, so it's very important that you watch the video the entire way through not to miss anything. And if you enjoy the mixing tips that you're about to receive, make sure to grab a copy of my Systematic Mixing Guide ebook written 10 years ago detailing specifically how to mix music exactly like this. So let's go. Okay, here are the DIs we'll be using. Alright, let's load up the amp on it. Immediately a great tone. It's, it's almost as if it was dialed specifically for his guitar. So knowing Josh, of course, we have a bank of highly usable presets to begin with. These are collections of very, very usable tones. I like it, but I think I'm going to start with number four. Alright, fantastic. Now, this might be counterintuitive to you, but when you're altering the timbre of a guitar sound, you actually want to start in the cabinet section, because the cabinet and the microphones are responsible for the vast majority of the, the overall tonality of the guitar sound. Strange, counterintuitive, I know, but here we are. So, this is a collection of impulses on offer. We have the British Straight Cab, we have the two uh, Mesa Oversizes. The one from 2000 has brighter speakers, the one from 2001 has darker speakers. Let's take a listen and scroll through them as the tone is playing to hear what kind of a difference just the speakers alone make. can hear a massive tonal difference, and these are identical V30 speakers, right? So you get an idea of how different these things sound side by side, and I can tell you that many more of them are bung sounding than are great, so let's go straight to the Sneep one here. And we'll do the same on our second microphone. So one thing that Josh has given us the ability to do here is combine the 57 with the 421, which is a combo of microphones that we used to use all the time in the 2000s, with a nice little blend slider through here. 421, very pingy, kind of scooped, gives us more of that scrapey 4K kind of stuff. Whereas the 57 is more balanced, more mid-heavy, kind of nasal, gives you the fullness. About 80-20 is the ideal blending ground for these. Cool, that's the cabinet out of the way. Now we're going to move on to dialing the amp itself. That's Josh as I just stepped on my son's Lego scream. It reacts very much like a block letter does. This is very familiar to me. The block letters normally had more gain than the 5150 Mark II's, 6505 pluses these days. So generally the pluses you'd have to dial up somewhere like this or maybe even here Whereas the block letters were more at home between like three and four, depending on how hard you boosted into them. I like the squish and the low mids that you get around about four. Just it carries the carries the notes really nicely. Really squishy low mids. They did a great job making it actually react like a block letter. I mean, this is really just jogging my memory. I've got one in the other room, I and mean, this is pretty much how it reacts. The big one, though, is post-gain, because the, the amount... Th there's a very specific thing that used to happen with this amp, right? We would never run it past three, because it wouldn't actually get any louder. It would just saturate the power amp more. So we'd just get more and more kind of squishy and saggy and compressed, but it wouldn't actually get us a, a bigger sound. So let's take a listen for that. I'm kind of curious whether they modeled it. Ah, 
unfortunately, they're making it get louder and louder and louder. That's not what happened in real life. But yeah, you tend to lose the dimensionality above about four or so. keep it about there. Now, the presence knob from memory used to basically do nothing until you got to about 7, 8. Very good. Very authentic. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Yeah, only kicks in above 7. Great job, STL. That's exactly right. Now, I want you to bear in mind that this is only going to be 50% of the guitar sound. We still have another three rhythm guitars. I'll be blending this with another amp to fill in the missing elements of the tone. So what I'm trying to get here is mostly that mid-range character in the notes. So bear that in mind as we dial this in. Power amp resonance is basically just another sub-low knob. Depending on the size of the room, we'd normally dial this at about seven or so. Sometimes more if it was a huge room and a small cab. Great, now let's check out the stomp box. I imagine he's got an 808 type clone or an 820 type thing uh, going into it. So if we disable it. That's a decent model. It pretty much tightens up the lows, saturates the mids a little bit more going into the amp. I will say that some people that are going for more of that kill switch kind of sound will really blast the output volume out of the pedal, lower the input gain on the amp, and lower the drive here as well. So this is more of that kill switch engage type thing. Hear how the amp reacts completely differently to that type of gain, because you're, you're saturating the front end rather than cranking up the pre-gain, and you've turned the drive all the way down on the stomp box. We're getting pretty, pretty 2005 in this, boys. All right, now we've doubled up the tone on both sides, left and right. Let's take a listen to it in the mix. Alright, so far so good. Believe it or not, this is only 50% of our tone so far, so let's move on to the rest. Now, what we're going to do in this case is check out some of the dual rectum fryer tones, starting here. Run through the presets. Okay, so you can hear a very different tonality unintended, to the 5150 block letter. This is where I tell you that the 5150 block letter and the dual rec being included here is no accident. This used to be our favorite blend back in the 2000s. It was always, if you could afford two amps, it'd be a block letter, it'd be a dual rectifier, and if you could afford one cab, it'd either be a Mesa Stiletto or a Mesa Oversize, and it'd be one of the top, sometimes one of the bottom V30s, but this is basically as authentic to the period as it can possibly get without having the physical amps right here in front of me. So I'm going to dial this in a way that by itself is not going to sound very, very impressive, but should combine really well to enlarge the sense of the tone that we get out of the 5150. So take a listen. We're going to set it to modern mode on the red channel. <laughs> One thing the Mesa has is an active EQ, so adjusting the mid, you know, turning the mid up is the same as turning the bass and the treble down. It's, it's highly interactive. You can get all kinds of different sounds out of it, but the first thing that crosses my mind whenever I hear it is 90s Ramstein. It's pretty much the sound of 90s Ramstein. This is really the riff to show that. All right, so you might be wondering what cab are we using for this? And very intentionally, we're actually using the Greenback speaker from the Marshall cab. The reason for that is the Greenback is a lot more scrapey. It's a lot more open voiced. 
and that tends to combine with the V30 in a way where they don't reinforce the exact same frequencies, and that's kind of what we're looking for here. So if we combine the two together, we're gonna turn this down, we're gonna listen to the 5150, and then blend it in. You can already hear that extra texture, you're getting more of that devil driver effect. This is why we use the quad track and bear in mind that I've actually got the second set of guitars panned only 85% of the way out. This tends to give you a bit of a, a panning cross effect. It actually makes the guitars sound larger, believe it or not, than having them fully 100% panned. For some reason, they don't quite combine the same way when they're both fully panned out to the extremes. Not half bad, let's spread that out and actually balance the quad tracks out against each other. Let's go to a more happening part of the song. Hear how there's still space in the mids for the solo riff, and you're gonna notice the same thing with the vocal in the chorus. So this is the mark of a great metal guitar sound. Sounds thick, sounds full, it's massively full range, but it's not in the way of the upper mid range. You can still hear the solos, you can still hear the vocals, all the space elements in the mix. And while we're here, do let me know down below if you want a guide on how I actually mastered this record. And with all that hard work now finally out of the way, we can celebrate by listening to a fully mixed version of the song with our rhythm guitars that we dialed in here today. Until next time, peace out. Narcissist. We speak with a clenched fist. Your maternity is lost. Your validity stops. Ah!